A significant event occurred approximately 10 years ago. I was well into an important project when a quarrel arose with a coworker. We couldn't agree on how to allocate our limited team resources. I wanted to prioritize our project, but my coworker was emphatic about allocating resources to his own project. This sparked a heated dispute, which had a significant impact on how I felt after work. Seeking consolation later in the evening about 10 p.m., I made the risky decision to drive despite being weary and disregarding safety standards. As fatigue set in, my eyelids drooped and my vision clouded. A car horn shook me awake as another vehicle approached. Panicked, I veered off the road, colliding with a power pole. The crash left me disoriented with a throbbing headache and clouded eyesight from the hit. I felt as if I were teetering between consciousness and darkness, dragged into obscurity by an unknown power. In the shadows I heard my name echoed, and as I struggled to lift my head, I saw a beautiful figure with long golden hair and deep blue eyes filled with sympathy. Dressed in a flowing white robe, the figure exuded brightness and love. The person reached out and urged me to take their hand, saying, Come, we need to hurry. Despite my perplexity, I accepted their hand, feeling weightless as my soul appeared to leave my body and drift in a mysterious space. Rising into the night sky, I gazed down to saw horrible creatures with twisted forms and scary features. Despite their scary look, the figure's warmth calmed me as we flew away. These entities attempted to draw me into the darkness, but the figure assured me of my safety, explaining that they were cursed spirits. Her voice provided me comfort as she walked me through this mystical journey. Curious, I asked where we were going. The apparition grinned and stated, I will take you to heaven. This startled me given my cynicism following the loss of my best buddy in a car accident years ago. As we arrived, the figure released my hand and led me to a magnificent circular edifice with finely carved doors. The edifice exuded an antique and mystical aura. As the gates opened, I felt both excited and uneasy, but the presence of angels soothed me. Inside, I saw a lovely figure sat on a throne bathed in a warm glow. Through the radiance, I recognized Jesus. He welcomed me kindly and promised to answer any of my inquiries. Explaining my catastrophic mistake of drinking and driving, I felt guilty and ashamed, knowing there were no secrets here. Jesus informed me that this wasn't punishment. It wasn't my judgment day yet. Jesus gently prompted me to consider my previous deeds, his sigh reflecting disappointment, and the significance of self-examination. He continued, You're here to think about what you've done. Instantly, memories of the vehicle tragedy rushed my mind, the crash, the couple's instant death, and their daughter's paralysis. When I saw this, I burst into tears, wondering why I had to witness such misery. Jesus emphasized that it was intended to motivate me to be a better person. I was frustrated and chastised myself since I had no idea what was ahead of me or the significance of this location. I began to doubt my worth because I felt like a complete mess. Jesus consoled me, cautioning me against excessive self-blame. He emphasized that my goal here was not to wallow in self-doubt but to grasp a fundamental truth. Everyone makes mistakes, but those failures should not determine the future. I felt understood and accepted, which helped to relieve my feelings of loneliness and self-consciousness. In subsequent encounters, Jesus warned humanity about the inclination to repeat its past mistakes. He demonstrated this with dramatic historical imagery of violent conflicts, industrial warfare, and the atrocities of World War II, particularly the Hiroshima bombing. These photographs captured the terrible realities of battle. I was transported to a future conflict in which millions died and cities collapsed due to nuclear bombs, and I contemplated the seemingly never-ending cycle of carnage. Jesus, expressing displeasure, stressed humanity's proclivity to repeat such disasters. His admonition included the duty to break the cycle and work for a brighter future. A cataclysmic calamity occurred, causing great damage to society. Another nuclear explosion struck South America, plunging the continent into war and terrible suffering. Missiles appeared to launch from Asia, instilling doubt and pain in me. I turned to Jesus and questioned why he couldn't interfere in this dismal future. My question seemed to irritate Jesus. His smile faded, giving way to wrath. He questioned why they should intervene when most people had abandoned them and lost faith. I was shocked to discover from Jesus that my father considered destroying humanity but eventually gave them another opportunity. He directed me to issue a warning. Disregarding instruction will result in disaster once more. 
Jesus prepared to send me back into the real world, providing me with warmth and power. Our chat came to an end, and he gently withdrew. Descending seemed like landing on an unknown road, accompanied by intense vibrations, a sense akin to breaking the boundary of time and space. While reconnecting with my body, I heard a tap on my car window. A doctor and paramedic told me that they would be there to help, and I was soon transported to the hospital. In the hospital, I had several tests, including one to assess my blood alcohol level, which was thankfully nil. Many years later, I had the confidence to relate this experience, despite the fear and unease it evokes. Some may dispute its veracity, and I too, have questioned its existence on occasion. I share not out of sympathy, but to impart a vital message. Jesus is on his way. It's an important and critical message, and I hope people listen and respond favorably. Story number two. The incredible luck of those who have witnessed near-death experiences. Initially, I believed that joy was a lone companion on life's arduous path. However, fate intervened with a chance meeting that altered the course of my life. A chance meeting with my current partner transformed a solo melody into a duet. Love quickly converted my individual journey into one of shared ambitions and destiny. Our collaborative artwork represented a future family while we danced with passion. A artwork I hadn't seen until this impact altered my universe, parenthood, an unexpected dance, dominated our conversations. My initial vision did not involve parent, but the stage was set. After turning 35, I became increasingly aware of the ticking clock and the health risks associated with delayed parenting. This realization made our story more complicated. Six months into our marriage, I announced my pregnancy, which astonished and delighted us. Despite occasional worries about our readiness, we felt boundless love and excitement. Preparations for the delivery included lifestyle modifications to protect our unborn child. Throughout my pregnancy, my spouse was supportive and focused on healthy behaviors, as well as the education and advancement of our children. In the early months of my pregnancy, I was frequently unwell and felt worse. Despite self-care, my body seemed less virus-resistant, which could be attributed to aging. Our son came safely, which made our family very happy. My headaches intensified three months after delivery. Standing made me dizzy one day when alone with the baby. As the room swirled and I weakened, I realized that my spirit had separated from my body. Confused and afraid, I noticed my body sleeping on the floor and my son happy in his cot. I was afraid and anxious to see my child. Despite my efforts, my soul and body refused to reunite, leaving me in despair. I prayed God for aid in this desperate predicament. Deity, please don't let me depart right now. My son needs me. Suddenly, a cloud-shaped entryway emerged in the room. Despite the discomfort and doubt, I persisted. I got a deep sense of friendly peace as I passed through the threshold. The environment was made up of energy rather than matter. I felt weightless and uninhibited. The space felt empty, yet the electric hug kept me company. Suddenly, a dazzling light illuminated the huge landscape. I looked at what made this so brilliant. As I neared, I saw the shadow of a tall white man with an enigmatic face. Although its appearance was unknown, it exuded a divine aura of purity and might. This made me feel small since it indicated that my time had yet to come. I wanted to stay because God had told me my children needed me. When I returned to my body, I begged for permission to ask any inquiries. God agreed, therefore I questioned why some near-death experiences included angels while others did not. God explained that each person has a unique path, with some needing assistance recovering faith and purpose. Those who are lost receive assistance, whilst those on a clear path may not see angels yet have distinct near-death experiences. God emphasized the importance of trusting one's heart and intuition for self-discovery and cautioned against forcing one's own path on others. Concerned about the consequences of a previous abortion, I sought guidance from God. God denounced abortion as a violation of the right to life. It can inflict physical and psychological harm to individuals and society. Instead of abortion, God urged respect for all conceived lives and assistance for people suffering from pregnancy complications. God then revealed a child's soul seeking a loving home. The boy endured until he met a lovely couple after visiting several families. However, interpersonal problems resulted in an abortion, bringing the story to a terrible conclusion. We lost a precious life. I was sorry, but God forgave me. 
underlining that everyone makes mistakes and that contemplation and change can bring redemption and peace. He emphasized the significance of every life. I eventually requested God to take me to heaven, and he gladly accepted. Holding his hand made me excited. We withdrew into a beautiful setting. A distant waterfall sung a relaxing tune. Thick green grass cushioned my steps, and the air was refreshing. Over a peaceful woodland and lake, a floating city displayed towering skyscrapers, castles, and sculptures. Children played joyfully in gorgeous neighborhoods complete with gardens and ponds. Everything seemed odd. I encountered a gentle spirit who remarked, Welcome to a realm of bliss and joy. This is heaven. I was glad for having such a lovely life. While savoring the beauty, my attention was drawn to a distant sound, similar to my son's cry. I realized I needed to return. God gently hugged me, and I found myself back in an empty space. I awoke from a dream after passing a threshold. The portal disappeared, and the real world reappeared, but I was unable to move. After hearing my son's cries, I felt like a ghost attempting to return to my body. Nevertheless, I persisted. I focused again, hoping to merge soul and body. A tremendous force gradually restored my movement. The process was laborious and unpleasant, like if my body had convulsed. Nevertheless, I continued. I reconnected with my body and felt elated when mobility returned. Cradling my son in his cot silenced his cries. My body grew stronger, and I was whole again. Every detail of this event from over a decade ago is still vivid in my mind. It was one of my most memorable and incredible experiences. I am grateful to God for intervening during times of existential doubt. God provided hope and tenacity amid soul-searching when meaning seems far. I praise God for my son's development as he approaches 18 years old. As I consider his route, I am impressed by his progress. I wonder what would have occurred if I had left at that critical moment. My heart is filled with thankfulness as I watch him grow independence, confidence, and responsibility. I'm pleased to have a healthy, happy child and a full family. I enjoy every moment of today, trusting in the divine plan. Whatever the future holds, I am grateful for every person and experience in my life. They are all gifts from God.